Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we take a look at a new exciting Kaiser design, uh, a Barlock Knives in my collection. Who does it best? And I'm not going to really decide on that, I don't think. And then seven great EDC pairings. Uh, every once in a while, I take stock of what I've been carrying and uh, and how I choose to pair different knives uh, for different carry and you know, different kinds of days. So we're going to take, take a look at all that stuff. But first, we're going to take a look at what I'm carrying this very same day. Uh, just two knives on me today. I've been in a in a in a two knife groove lately, um, and really sort of refining my um, my rules. You know, I have a lot of different rules for carry. Uh, so today I have this uh, a gift from Dave. This old sword blade reviews uh, the awesome Boker Smatchet. Uh, this is designed by Chuck Gadridis, uh, based on the historical. Um, U.S. Army weapon, uh, which was a 13-inch bladed, double-edged, um, you know, fighting tool that uh, could second as a sort of machete. I think recently I've been saying that it was a, a utility tool, but in doing more research, no, it was designed as a weapon um, and, and then uh, later turned into this right here uh, in the... 21st century. Uh, so yeah, Chuck Adritis, he's been on the show, amazing uh, custom knife maker who really every knife he does is unique, I got to say. And he's done a couple of designs for Boker recently, this one, and then he has another one out that's much more sleek and slender. Uh, this is a full four inch blade. Sorry, my left hand is not as, not as dexterous. Uh, this is a full four inch blade. Really, really nice, big handle. And it came out in a couple of different... Uh, iterations one of them is the green canvas micarta very nice looking has that a little bit more of that military look and then this is the rosewood handle i love rosewood frequently you'll find it as the fretboard material on guitars uh really love rosewood and this also harkens back to sort of um uh old school military kit you know it kind of looks a little bit like walnut and um you know, has has a bit of that vibe. So I love this. Uh, not not uh, a, a uh, not a knife I can carry in in every style of pant uh, jeans. Fine uh, khakis and kind of work stuff. Not as much uh, work, meaning like office work stuff. But work uh, work pants like um, Duluth Trading Company or whatever five eleven pants. Uh, these this is a great 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 carry. It's got this beautiful clip that's quite i don't know well it harkens back to that era when this was designed it's sort of sort of art deco-y sort of uh i don't know those three fullers look like you know planes rising or something i don't know yeah you can you can use your own imagination but i just i think that uh i think that chuck Adritis does a great job of translating this historical design into a modern folder that's vg10 by the way extremely sharp uh, dagger style blade, but not dagger ground, obviously. Now, uh, in the spirit of keeping with the rules and continuing to refine my rules, uh, what's what's my secondary carry with this? Well, it's not large. It's not a liner lock. It doesn't have VG10. It doesn't uh, have wooden handles. Uh, it is, in fact, small and straight bladed, and it's this little rattler by... Uh, great eastern cutlery now this is the um uh what's the number on this sucker i always forget uh the 19 that's right that's the number 19 now this is a really little knife here let me i'll put it next to the smatch it you can see i mean that is a vest pocket knife vest uh, if you're wearing a three-piece suit or that is a uh, like a fifth pocket on your jeans knife for sure you can drop that in with your change and even if it rides uh, east to west like this, sideways in your pocket, you're not even going to notice it. It is it is teeny tiny. Uh, this one has beautiful um, uh, maroon micarta and that really cool shield, that shield-shaped shield. Very cool. And bolsters. Really do like this knife. Now, th this was a funny story with this knife. I ordered it uh, from Blade HQ. It took forever to come, and, I, and, and then I got in touch with them, and they're like, no, we sent that ages ago. And somehow, I don't know, it got held up in the mail somewhere. And 
I got so bent out of shape about it that um, I started accusing a guy in the mailroom at work uh, who I know likes knives. I didn't accuse him <laughs> to his face. That would have been honorable. I just sort of said something over the air, like, I bet that guy in the... And then I felt terrible because a month later, and I bought another one. A month later, this shows up. It got caught somewhere. And I was so uptight about not having this knife that I really had to have and I paid all this money for that I ended up accusing someone and besmirching their honor. And I never said anything to him. So I don't think he listens. But if you do, I apologize. Uh, great little knife. I gave the other one to my dad and he loves it too. It's just a great little tiny drop in the bottom of the pocket knife. And then with that super uh, sharp and straight uh, Warncliffe 1095 blade, it's just a great little utility knife. Great, great little knife. So this is my carry today. And it is a picture in contrast. And that's kind of a... Um, I don't know. That's that's what I feel like uh, it's got to be these days. Uh, no way you'll see me carrying two Spydercos or two Emersons or two or two Tantos. It's just not going to happen. And you'll see how that works a little bit later with my seven great EDC pairings. Now, if you think what we do here is good and you want to see it keep going, um, you might consider us uh, checking us out on Patreon. We have three levels of support. Uh, you can be a traditional junkie at $3, a, a tactical junkie at $5, or a gentleman junkie at $10. And of course, you don't have to be a gentleman to do that. Um, at every level, you get stickers, you get a mention on the podcast, you get uh, um, exclusive interview extras. So after each interview, we do a, 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 little, ex a little bit of extra interview. Maybe it's stuff that's either more personal or inflammatory, perhaps, or controversial. We talk about it for about 20 minutes, and then we post that for patron members. <clears throat> and then at the $10 level, as a gentleman junkie, you get entered into the monthly knife giveaway. This last month, it was a Finch um, uh, 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 cherry bomb, not cherry bomb, Oh, manaj. It was a Finch knife that we gave away uh, the last time. And then um, this coming month, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I'm starting to starting to uh, think about what it'll be. That's kind of a fun thing. It's kind of whatever is uh, on my mind at the time I get to uh, give away. So check us out on Patreon. The quickest way to get there is to head over to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Now, remember, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So we've had the fellas from Ferrum Forge on here. Oh, that sounded good. Lots of Fs, lots of alliteration. We've had them on the show a couple of times, the brothers Willemson, and uh, had some great conversation. And they are an interesting pair. You know, they, uh, they started off as a small uh, custom outfit. Uh, they grew and grew, and then they did a lot of uh, collaboration work with Civivi and, and, uh, and uh, we, and sort of blew up from there. And now they're... Um, now they have sort of a, a hybrid where they do some of their own and they also have some of their uh, uh, designs produced from uh, the big companies like Civivi, uh, but they also have their own shingle. Anyway, out from uh, their their new their own shingle is a sequel to the little knife they came out with a while ago, which was I never got it myself, but I really thought it looked pretty cool called the lackey and it's a small fixed blade knife i love the name too lackey like he's just kind of following around what are we gonna do now huh what are we gonna do now so uh the lackey was a small sort of uh, neck knife sized fixed blade it, it had like a, a almost three inch drop point blade nice little finger choil neutral handle uh you know and then and that you kind of know a Ferrum Forge knife when you see it. They have a very particular design language, and and the Lackey really fit it. Well, the Lackey XL is a is a four and a half inch version of that same knife, and as I say here often, the size increase really allows the this knife to fully express its design. I really like how this looks. Very elegant, full bellied knife, uh, great looking point, uh, but at four and a half inches, it's it's a great. EDC length. Uh, you can wear it on your belt. It, it, four and a half inches for me personally is kind of on the outside of the easily carried in the waistband style knife. Like I think this one would work great. And uh, if you look at it, the handle to blade ratio is nice. I like on small fixed blades. I like a small handle on a small fixed blade knife. And here you have the addition of a full finger choil 
at the Ricasso or the blade. So you can afford a smaller handle because you're probably going to be using that choil quite a bit. Uh, another thing I like about the handle, it besides its neutrality, there's nothing more comfortable or useful than a neutral style handle, uh, but is the rounded butt cap, the rounded pommel. I really appreciate the rounded pommel. Uh, not only is it very neutral in either edge in or edge out, tip down with the thumb on top. I mean, it's gonna feel the same either way, but also that rounded pommel is gonna fit great <laughs> in the spare tire. Uh, when you're wearing this thing in your uh, in your waistband and you're sitting down, it's not gonna poke your ribs too badly or, or at all. Looks like the short handle round pommel is gonna work out great. So this really did catch my eye. Uh, the Ferrum Forge um, Lackey XL uh, coming out from Ferrum Forge. That's a 4.6, I said four and a half, 4.6 inch blade and uh, G10, you can get it in D2 or 9CR18 MOV. The D2 is for, uh, you know, a, a, a you know the best overall edge retention. And then the 9CR is 100% corrosion resistant, or at least it's com considered a, com uh, a, a complete, an, an actual total stainless steel, unlike D2. Uh, green or black G10 handles, looks cool. Check it out. All right, coming up next, uh, a very, very exciting design from uh, Azomai. Uh, and from Kaiser. Now, Azo Mai is a very uh, prolific designer over there at Kaiser. And uh, I feel like I've really liked a lot of the knives he's come out with, but this one to me just, I don't know, it just, it, it ticks almost all the boxes here. Um, so this is the new, uh, uh, what, what do they call on this thing? Uh, the, oh, that's right, weird name, Towser K. This is the Towser K. And, um, you know, just to look at it, you can probably figure out what I like about it uh, right up front. That blade is just gorgeous. Now, uh, Ben on, uh, on Knife News here says it's a, a worn cliff, but with that belly, it's approaching um, reverse tanto. And, of course, that made me chuckle because I, I, I alternately like to pretend that there's no such thing as a reverse tanto. But anyway, I really like this blade shape, very useful. I like a bellied worn cliff. That's what I'm calling this. I do like a bellied worn cliff that has a um, uh, a gradual sort of tip like that. That tip uh, looks like it, it's pretty much center line with the pivot and the, and the uh, tip of the pommel. So it looks like it's gonna be right in the right place if you need to uh, puncture something or thrust or uh, you know, open a clamshell package, something like that. Uh, but you have that nice sweeping belly. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, but what's the real you? Uh, and by the way, that's 154 CM blade steel, which uh, you know I just love. You've got bearings and you've got a, a, a thumb stud. Great combination right there. Uh, but the real star of this show is the handle. The handle is made of rich light. And it is just beautiful. It, it's got this, they're calling it a royal blue. Now, to me, from the photographs, it looks more like a grayish blue, like a, um, I got to come up with a good name for it, but it's like the blue, uh, like sort of a maritime blue or something. I don't know. I'll come up with a good name for it, but you can see it right here. It's a, It's like a blue heather, and it's got a really nice diamond pattern etched into it or milled into it. But the cool thing about Rich Light is that it's kind of like micarta and kind of has the, the feel of micarta, uh, like paper micarta, because that's what it is. It's shredded paper in suspension or, or compressed with heat and epoxy uh, to make this robust uh, handle material. And I really like the look of it. Uh, so with the blade and the handle looks also very somewhat neutral, and er er but quite ergonomic. Combination of that blade with that Rich Light blue handle uh, mm, it's a knockout. And you don't hear me say that too often about Kaisers. I do like and respect, but uh, the one thing that sticks in my craw a little bit, or sticks in my craw, sticks in my eyes craw. Now I know why they did this, but it's the sort of Ricasso area there where you see the Kaiser logo. Um, and so they put the, ch the sharpening choil there uh, so that you can avoid the thumb stud. The thumb stud has to be there just due to the, the, um, uh, the geometry of opening up that that blade. So the thumb stud has to be where it is, which means the if you want the sharpening choil to be more than just ceremonial, it has to be in such a place that plunge grind has to be just forward of the um, of the thumb stud, so that when you're using a rod system or any sort of or stones or whatever, you're not bumping into the uh, thumb stud there. The thumb stud is not an obtrusion 
which does not allow you to sharpen the very you know bottom part of the blade so to do all that you need this big flat ricasso area on the tang of the blade there and I, it seems like a neutral kind of like a wasted space area to me i know you could ride your your forefinger up onto it and get closer to the blade uh but it i don't know i don't know maybe if there's jimping there and i can't see any uh maybe it would afford you a little choil the way the finch knives give you a little bit of uh, of a jimped area on the flipper tab that you can ride up on. That's the one, uh, that's the one question mark for me on this design, but I really think it's beautiful as oh my, it just has a great eye. And uh, I think it, it, it's really blossoming here. <laughs> I, I can't pretend to know about his design career and say that it's blossoming here in this design, but I can say this is uh, this is just a knockout as far as I'm concerned. So I'll be looking for that. Plus the the addition of the rich light handle material makes it uh, intriguing, alluring, and those coffee beans make it delicious. If you're just listening, it's pictured on a pile of coffee beans. It looks really nice. All right, so that's it for the uh, for the knife life news this week. Um, we are really looking forward to a couple of these things coming out. I, or we, the royal we. I am looking forward to a couple of these things coming out. Uh, it's not every week that I read life knife news that I like everything, but this week I'm excited. So still to come, uh, the state of the collection, we're gonna take a look at a couple of bar lock knives and I'm gonna try and determine who does it best, maybe perhaps, but uh, they all have their charm. And then we're gonna take a look at seven great EDC pairings. Stick around. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. I'm going to call it a bar lock uh, because I don't want to, I don't want to use any specific names, but I will name them all. Uh, so we're talking about the bar lock, which was originally, um, you know, created, uh, what was Williamson? Uh, uh, um, McHenry. Oh, dang, nab it. We're, it was originally created for Benchmade by McHenry and Williams, I believe. And that is the, uh, ambidextrous bar lock here and that is uh that is a lock that you can actuate on both sides you pull it back and this bar engages the tang of the blade here when you pull it back it has two springs attached to it the springs are called omega springs because they're in the shape of an omega and they they start here and they curve around to the to the uh, lock here anyway so when you pull against those springs the bar retracts freeing the blade on that pivot to swing down that is uh originally called the axis lock this is a bench made griptilian wearing aws uh, uh aluminum scales but it, it is a bench made so it is the original um bar lock so it's we'll call it the axis lock because that's what they call it uh the patent, everyone loved it. Uh, a lot of Chinese companies oh, ripped, ripped it off. Uh, in the, a lot of um, a lot of Chinese companies uh, ripped it off when uh, when the patent was still going. But uh, they finally uh, lost the patent. Not lost the patent. The patent expired. I can hear you guys. And uh, the patent expired after 25 years. And now all the other companies have created their own version of it. Uh, this is probably my favorite Benchmade uh, that I've ever handled right here, um, both in terms of model, period, this is the bug out, but also in terms of that amazing axis lock. Uh, so so this is what we're going on. Uh, this is what we're comparing all uh, bar locks to. Um, so next, I want to show off the Ritter Hogue, it's sort of the next obvious thing to show off because uh, Benchmade used to be the OEM for Doug Ritter and his um, RSK Mark I, RSK Mark I Ritter Survival Knife 
Mark I. Uh, we know it as the Ritter Grip, Ritter Griptilian, because they use the Griptilian handle and his his blade. Now, the whole point behind the Ritter uh, RSK Mark I was to make a uh, uh, economically a, an affordable um, folding knife with affordable handle materials, but a wicked uh, great high-end blade. And uh, that's what it was originally. And, um, you know, Benchmade made it for a long time. And then they stopped doing OEM work altogether. And Doug Ritter had to find a place to have this knife made. He landed with Hogue, which, man, he couldn't have done any better than that because they're an amazing American uh, knife company. You know, they started doing grips for guns and different uh, different accessories for guns. And then, I don't know, maybe maybe a decade ago, they started making knives. And, um, man, they just do a, an, an amazing job. And they're not just farming it out to some company somewhere else. Uh, they make everything themselves. And... Um, <clears throat> When the patent was up on the Axis lock, they jumped on it and created their ABLE lock. And, and ABLE stands for Enhanced Bar, no, Ambidextrous Bar Lock Enhanced ABLE Lock. And they really, they did a great job. Now, now a lot of people think they do a better job than Benchmade on this style lock. And um, now that I'm having this conversation, like... <sighs> It just depends on what you like. Now the 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 Hogue has just a tiny bit of stick in it after it's engaged. You know, when you undo it, it has a little bit of stick. But if you think about it, it's sort of uh, the way a lot of people. Well, Chris Reeve originally thought there should be a little bit of lock stick. You know, when he when he created the um, uh, the frame lock because that stick ensures lockup. Um, some people don't like, a lot of people don't like it, especially fidgeters don't like it. Uh, I don't like it, I'll, I'll have to admit, uh, but it does enhance that lockup. Uh, so in this situation, it's not uh, on this Ritter Hogue RSK Mark I, it is not a an annoying stick. It's It, it feels like it should be there. Um, it's not like you're fighting against it and then it breaks free. It's just an extra little, I don't know, feels like an extra little click in there. So that's the uh, that's the Hogue. Now they've been putting this Able Lock on a lot of their knives, and I think it's I think it's great. I think it's great when um, that companies can protect their invention for a while and hold it close for a while, and then after a while, it it be, you know goes to the public. The public can can enjoy that design, and then we can have innovation from there <clears throat> because one company is going to do it their way, and they might choose to innovate. But if they don't have to, and if, if they're, you know, people love their stuff anyway, why should they? But you open the door and then there are going to be people who are, who are saying, I think we can do this a little bit better. And so you're going to get innovation that way. The better mousetrap, the American way. All right. So next is the um, uh, TJ Schwartz designed Perpetua by Millet. An awesome, awesome knife. I love this knife. And uh, thanks to, to uh, listener and patron, Mr. Filato, this knife is mine. Even after, uh, um, you know, complaining to Josiah DeMille that they're not making this anymore and I've, you know, slept on the drop. Uh, well, um, Mr. Filato stepped in and said, here, you can have mine. And I love this knife. But uh, I, of, of all of the knives I'm showing here, this to me is the most pleasing to... Uh, to fidget with uh, in terms of axis lock, bar lock style knives. Uh, this one just feels best to me. And I know that it's a subjective uh, uh, judgment, but I just love the way this one feels. This is a great knife, by the way, just an outstanding EDC knife. It's a little heavier than I was expecting, even though it has all the weight reduction. Uh, but if you look at those liners, they're pretty thick steel liners. So, uh, but this is one robust, knife and beautiful and i love that in single blade shape i'll just call it that uh so my favorite of the of all the bar locks i'm showing here right now is the perpetua i'll say it but i'm not going to say that they did it best i'm not going to say anyone did it best because what do i know but this is just what feels best to me all right lastly uh, maybe perhaps the runner-up and this is going to be a, a, a surprise um but i must be honest and uh that is the sog the sog this is the xr lock and I am not saying on all SOG specimens, it's this good. I actually have a, a, a Terminus that has a, a pretty janky bar lock, I got to say. It doesn't feel like it remains 
perfectly perpendicular to the handle unless you apply perfectly equal pressure with your finger and thumb. Um, so you know what I mean? It, it sort of twists in there. This one is perfect. This is the uh, the Kiku XR, um, and it should be perfect. This is a like a nearly $200 knife, and when you're buying a SOG, you usually don't expect that, uh, but it is really well made. You've got, uh, this is USA made too, uh, uh, I think. Have I, have I spoken too soon? Not sure. Um, but this micarta handle is really comfortable. Uh, everything about this knife is really great. I love recurved tantos. You know that. I uh, love the way this fits in the hand. But when you when you pull it back, when you pull back this the bar lock, it just swings right in. A lot of that has to do with the weight of the blade. But a lot of that also has to do with the setup of the pivot and the smoothness of that lock. So... I have a growing appreciation for the, the axis style bar lock. Um, I, I hate to say that because it was attached to Benchmade for so long, I kind of was a little bit mm, hot and cold about it because I am a little bit hot and cold with Benchmade. <clears throat> but um, just looking through various sub collection style categories in my main collection, I was uh, looking at these bar locks and I was like, uh, Okay, so this is an example of four different companies that are doing this. I know there are many others, and I've experienced many others. Like the SRM, I didn't think they did it very well. Even though I know they've been ripping it off for years, um, I still don't think they did it very well. Um, and that's as San Renmu, uh, by the way. Uh, so an interesting lock, a very strong lock, and a very fun lock. And it's, this, and it's extremely intuitive. Anyone I've ever handed a, um, a Benchmade to knows how to close it. And... Uh, and then uh, lastly, it's, uh, it's fidgetability is just through the roof. It's fun. What can we say? It's fun. So that is the bar lock. Who does it best? Let, it, let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment below. Uh, also, like and subscribe if you, if you haven't already. Or you can leave us a message on our listener line, 724-466-4487. Just call it. You'll hear a little uh, outgoing message. Leave a message. Let me know. What do you think? Who makes the best bar lock? Uh, is it is it the original ax is it the original bench made axis lock or is someone else doing it better right now? God, could it be Sog? How how you know that would be out of that's that would be unexpected, but that would be cool. I like that. I like to be surprised. So anyway, there you have it. I look forward to finding out what you think is the best bar lock out there. Okay, so coming up after this sip of coffee. Seven great EDC pairings. Now I think I may have done a show like this before. I take stock every every so often. It's usually about a half year. Take a look at um, what I've been carrying. And, uh, uh, you know, most of the stuff is boring to me. The phone, whatever. Uh, you know, my keys. Oh, I should have brought my keys down. My keys are upstairs. But uh, I, have, uh, I have a little Launch 9 on there. My little switchblade on my keys. And it's starting to get nice and worn. You know, I love the, the look of worn anodized aluminum. Uh, so that's starting to look cool, but I'm not showing that stuff. Up. I'm just showing off the two knives I've been carrying uh, recently. These these are, are some common pairings. And now I am not including fixed blade knives in this. Actually, um, oddly enough, even with the change of weather and the and the adding of garments, uh, past couple of weeks haven't really been carrying fixed blade knives. And I'll tell you why. And it's embarrassing. And maybe just saying this out loud to the world will help me fix it. I've gained a little weight. And my pants aren't as loose anymore. So it's not as comfortable to have a fixed blade knife in the waistband. And there, I've said it out to the world. Uh, so I, I have, I'm have i resolving uh, to, to tighten the belt a little bit. And there's going to be some changes in the diet here at home. Uh, and, and I'll get back to fixed blade knives real quick. <laughs> real quick here. It's cramping my style. So uh, not to mention just making me feel icky. So that's what that's what's happening. That's why I'm only carrying uh, folders. So what is the first pairing? Uh, okay, first we're going to lay down a couple of ground rules. You've heard them here before. Can't have... So there's always a, a main knife that's in my front right pocket. And then there's a secondary knife, usually in my front left pocket. Sometimes it's in my back left pocket. Uh, the blades cannot be the same. Can't have two Tantos. Can't have two Bowies. Uh, blade steels should be different, but I'm not too, I don't get too uptight about that. Uh, you can't have the same, I can't have the same locking mechanism, can't have the same handle material. And, um, 
So it's got to be varied up. And then, of course, the size, there has to be a size difference. Today's you saw was pretty extreme with the Gidre with the uh, with the Boker Smatch it and the Little Rattler number 19 GEC. This is kind of a cartoonish version of what I'm talking about. Uh, but let's get to that first pairing. Okay, the first pairing are two new American classics. And by new, I mean they haven't been around too long. Uh, I have two of these, but I've chosen this one, the TRM Atom, Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. Uh, great 3.6 inch blade. This is 20 CV, uh, nearly fully flat ground, very thin, very svelte, very light, thin and slicey, and just perfectly manufactured. I can say that, perfectly manufactured. This is uh, wearing G Carta scales from GL Hansen and Son. Uh, I can't remember what what they each G Carta pattern has its own name. I can't remember if it's candy apple green or something like that. Uh, but just a great knife, thin, slicey. You've got a straight there on the edge, and then you've got a nice belly. Perfect all around utility knife. Uh, and and it's not just a utility knife; it's a classy piece to have on you. You can carry it in in uh, a suit. It's very light and thin. So, oh, and by the way, I like how they've thickened their deep carry pocket clip. The gauge of the titanium seems a little thicker compared to my first one. All right, we're going to set this down here. And now to accompany this, to accompany this knife is the Finch Runtley. So you've got a, a, a lot of differences here. It is a liner lock. So, all right, maybe, maybe the lock isn't, isn't as important, uh, but or maybe this is just an exception. So I've been carrying the Finch with this a lot because it's got an opposite style blade. It is small. It is very utilitarian in that very straight edge. Uh, it's also got a lot of charm like the TRM. Um, before I was talking about uh, the Azo Kaiser, the new, um, the new knife by him and how I didn't like that neutral area right in front of the sharpening toil unless it has this style of jimping underneath and with the pictures i have of it so far i can't make that out but this is what i was referring to all right so this is an excellent uh combination you can pretty much tackle anything that's coming at you uh with these two things um and you know i know when no one likes to hear this but this trm adam would make a great uh you know in a pinch tactical knife too, because, because of that point and because of how light it is and, and because of the shape of that drop point, actually, it does come to quite a, quite an acute point. All right. So there you go. That's an, that's our first combo. Second is uh, I've been carrying this one a lot recently, um, which I did when I first got it. And then it kind of, you know, as all knives do, uh, went to the back burner for a while, but this is the uh, Jason Knight designed Fox Knives Made Tactical Elements produced and or uh, Tactical Elements distributed. Now you can get this anywhere, but when I got it, uh, Tactical Elements was the only company carrying it, and uh, this was the the version two of this knife. And oh my lord, do I love it! This is a uh, anodized titanium frame lock, as you can see. Uh, it is a folding kukri, and I think the best of the folding kukris and i like them i mean i like my raja too as much as anyone but this is the most beautiful and maybe even the most sort of accurate to the spirit of the kukri uh, that i've seen in a folder love this handle it works great the shape of it works great as a kukri handle in that uh, kukri you're doing a lot of swinging chopping and slashing so this widened end uh, really holds your hand in place and then, of course, the flipper tab keeps it from running up onto the blade. We don't think of kukris as thrusting implements, but they are. And uh, if you're thrusting with this, you want to make sure your hand doesn't slip onto that very sharp recurve blade. So here you go. You've got a, a recurve. You've got a big titanium um, micarta uh, recurve here. And then your carry partner is the Kiridashi by Cold Steel. Love this little utility knife, the Cold Steel Kiridashi. So awesome. So what you have here is a short blade. What is this? Two and a two and a half inches or two, let's see. Yeah, about two and a quarter inches of uh, some of four zero three four eight eight steel, I think, <laughs> whatever the hell that is. Some sort of cheap steel uh, sharpens up and ha sharpens up pretty quickly keeps a 
full, really sharp edge, surprisingly long for how inexpensive it is. Of course, you have the FRN handle here. I think since it's cold steel, it's grivery. And then you have an integrated pocket clip here. Uh, it's not fully integrated in that you can remove it, but there's nothing you're going to put there. You're just going to have a little empty shelf. So it is uh, the same material as the handle, FRN. And I was a little eh about the handle. I still don't like the way it looks, but it feels really good in hand. It feels great in hand. Since it is a small and thin knife, this uh, wide, broad, uh, same material clip down here really fills, fills in the palm for you. So here you have a, a another sort of cartoonish version of the concepts we're talking about here, a deeply recurved uh, four and a quarter inch blade uh, kukri, and then, you know, from India, and then from Japan, you have this kiridashi, I mean, you know, the, the origin nations of the original designs. And then you have this straight bladed kiridashi, small, unassuming, you know, you pull this out in the lunchroom, people are going to raise an eyebrow, you pull out the kiridashi, they're just going to think you're going to open up a box or something, right? Okay, next combo. A very classy combo. This is one I've been carrying uh, a bit lately. Uh, first is the Sebenza 21 in the front right pocket. Chris Reeve knife, Sebenza 21. This is my favorite version of that knife. Uh, with the simple black micarta inlays, it's funny when they show up that micarta is the same tone as that gray titanium. And then with your funk and everything, it did not take long actually for this to become black micarta. But I do love the Sebenza 21. I love the inlay models. Um, I don't care for the polished titanium handles, but uh, I or or the um, the designs too much. But I love just these simple inlays. Now the thirty one also looks cool, and the inlay is much bigger and and has a different footprint. And it reminds me of a fifties car, uh, just the big swooping sort of uh, uh, look of that inlay. I do not have a thirty one. Um, I would like to at some point, but but just the way this feels in hand with those inlays is just, uh, this is just a magical knife. Magical. I said magical. This is really worth all of the hype it's gotten over all of the years. So front right pocket, and by the way, this is super smooth, wearing a Jared Neve uh, edge, so it's incredibly, incredibly sharp, and uh, and the lock up, no, no, uh, no lock bar insert. It just works perfectly. Okay, so that's the front right. And now the front left is a new one I've been carrying quite a bit recently. This is from Queen Cutlery. Uh, you know, there is the old Queen Cutlery, uh, a very well-respected uh, uh, slip joint maker. Actually, we just talked about it. If you check out this week's um, podcast, uh, sun uh, Sunday night podcast, uh, I spoke with uh, Mike Latham of CollectorKnives.net, and he's our resident slip joint expert. And when I mean expert, when I say expert, I mean expert. We talked a bit about queen cutlery. This is not the classic uh, queen cutlery. This is the new uh, queen cutlery. It's, I think it is a, uh, uh, in league with um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works and Rough Rider. And it, I'm not sure. I, I got to do some more research on this, uh, but it is a nice, listen to this, it is a, a really nice worn cliff. Uh, just, it looks a bit like the 38 pattern uh, from, from Great Eastern Cutlery in the shape of that handle. This looks a lot like my 38, uh, just smaller. Uh, really nice worn cliff hand, uh, worn cliff blade. And, and its relationship to the handle is presents a really nice cutting angle. You see how that straight edge is, uh, is projected down from my grip. This makes this a surprisingly effective uh, utility knife. And actually, this thing is damn stout. This is made in China. This is for 440A steel. Uh, the old queen cutleries, they were American made and, you know, uh, but a really nice amber bone here. I mean, very nice, especially the, the uh, what do they call this? The, the pole side, whatever. The, the back side is really a, a, a nice piece. And then the front side, it's nice too. Just not as nice. Uh, one thing that sticks in my craw about this knife is Let's see if we can focus on the shield. Let me close this. Listen to the walk and talk on this. Here, since we have the. 
So really outstanding action on this. By the way, these are inexpensive and they have a, a, a line, a full line of, of the classic, you know, they, they make a canoe and a trapper and a, um, a, uh, I think a sow belly. So some of the, the real classic patterns in this, uh, with this style bone, with this shield and that, this steel. But I'm gonna try and focus on the shield. If you can see, it's a crown. <laughs> it's a crown, but it's on there crooked. <laughs> it drives me nuts. And it, it, you know, the knife would have to be sitting like this and to be considered straight like this for that shield to work. So the, the shield is cattywampus, but you know what? What are you going to, what are you going to, what are you going to demand at 20 bucks? You're just going to hope you're not going to make demands at 20 bucks. So everything else about this knife is pretty damn awesome, especially for 20 bucks. And I think it looks great with the Sabenza. This is another um, aspect another rule of these pairings that doesn't always hold, but that I like to adhere to somewhat. I also like the pairings to have sort of a different, you know, very expensive, very inexpensive, very expensive, very inexpensive here. They're both expensive. So, I mean, or one's a little more than the other, but on the whole, I, I'm, 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 I do like to keep them at different strata in a way. I don't always hold to that. Like I said, so this combo, uh, uh, one that's been getting a lot of, a, a lot of time lately is uh and i've been swapping out the this with the um with its cousin the umnum zan the new umnum zan i've been loving so there you go and again a curved blade and a straight blade in terms of cutting edge there all right here i'll leave these down here so i can next pairing another exercise in the extremes this is the uh Hinderer, uh, Rick Hinderer Knives XM24, one of my favorites of all times. This is the Warren Cliff. Just look at this. Just gaze upon it. It is a such a beautiful knife. And that handle is just, mm, mm, mm. And not the handle. I do like the handle. I'm sorry, but I meant the blade. That blade, that shape. This is one of those cases where having the full four inch length of that blade allows that Warren Cliff to truly express itself in terms of its shape look at this oh that is just i i i defy you to find a better look and you know what i have uh i have it with the no choil in the 18 doesn't look nearly as beautiful i do think that this worn cliff merits a choil i just think it looks better with a choil all right so uh, the worn cliff 24 with here let me put this i'll just put it here look at that thing that is just a gorgeous knife uh one of one of my prized knives for sure. So that with the GEC number fourteen, I love the fourteen. Uh, the fourteen, fifteen, they're both uh, they're both boys' knives. That's the sort of it's a, a sleeve board pattern. Sleeve board referring to the small sort of uh, ironing board that would come down with the main ironing board in the kitchen when they folded down in the old days, like my grandpa's house. Uh, so this is a sleeve board pattern, a little bit wider at the pommel than at the uh, front bolster. This is the number 14, and it is just stunning in this um, autumn jig bone. Not autumn. It's not autumn jig bone. It's uh, amber jig bone. Just beautiful. I love this thing. Uh, it's in the uh, Titty Ute Unexcelled trim. So that's their fanciest line. You've got a fluting in the bolster here. You've got that shield. You've got the, that's peach seed jigging, I believe when it's real small like that. Uh, and then the stars of the show, of course, the clip point blade, that etch has been has been removed, or you know, you can barely see the etch because I let it patina and then I ended up polishing the blades. Um, I don't mind, it. I, I kind of don't like etches anyway. Beautiful and great walk and talk. And then the little pen blade, they, their pen blades are the best. They just make, Sometimes I feel like pen blades are used as throwaway. You know, we, we have a spring here. We're going to stick this little pen blade here. But their pen blades at GEC are awesome, especially on some of their larger models. They have really big, long pen blades, but they're still very thin and have that great tip. So this thing is like a scalpel. I, uh, I keep them both very sharp, but I, I rarely use the, the pen blade rarely if ever so it stays very sharp so you always know when you're carrying this knife that no matter how much you've used this side you always have a razor sharp uh maybe i won't call it razor sharp that's that's a real uh that's a real 
you know, my sharpening isn't that good, but you'll have a very, very, very sharp secondary blade there if you need it. So here it is, the Hinderer XM24 Warren Cliff with the Great Eastern Cutlery number 14 boys knife. And I like this double bladed setup. I have one of these with the same handle covers. That's just a single bladed spear. Great knife also, but I like the double bladed setup here. All right, next. Okay. Next is one of the greats, one of the modern greats here. This is the Spartan Harzi folder. This is the knife junkie edition. One of one. <laughs> they uh, very graciously put my, uh, put my logo in the handle after the interview. And they also put it on the filler tab, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, you've heard me talk about this knife time and time and time and time again. This is one of my favorite views of this knife. Look at the handle like that. Look at those thick slabs of titanium, and then and then the the chamfering, the chamfering, and how they how they meet at the peaks of those finger grooves. Man, this knife is just just perfect, beautifully made. Mm, I'm not going to say perfect. This this area right here, I wouldn't have minded a uh, uh, a sharpening choil there, but uh, other than that, that's the one one minor complaint I have of this knife because sometimes you just have to find a complaint, um, but you know, it's that classic Bill Harsey design. His style is awesome. He's another one. I know a Harsey design when I see it. And, uh, well, this is just one of my absolute favorites. Very, very sharp. A little thick behind the edge. This one I wouldn't mind. I've talked, I've thought about this, having, uh, having it hollow ground uh, just for sliciness. All right, so here we go with the here i'm going to move these down a little bit so we have some room uh but this next carry combo is the spartan harzy folder that's the large knife that i'll be carrying in my front right pocket my main blade if you will uh the secondary blade is this the best case ever it's the case swayback jack uh, with case knives i know a lot of people uh you know give them some shade they are collectibles all right First and foremost, and you can tell by how you look when you look at their catalog. They they make a million versions of a, of most of the classic uh, slip joint patterns, but they do it in infinite variety with the handle covers. So they are collectibles. They do vary the steel between their surgical uh, their uh, true sharp stainless steel, uh, and which is a I think a four twenty. HC and this chrome vanadium, which is like a 1095 Crovan, I think. Uh, so this is in that this was at one time very nicely patinaed. And then I polished, I went through a period of time where I polished all my blades. This is an incredible knife. This is the first Warren cliff knife I ever had. I saw Randy Johnson of, uh, uh, of YouTube got one of these and just, couldn't stop talking about how awesome it was. So I went out and got one and I got to agree this really, uh, the purchase of this knife several years back really kickstarted my love of slip joints and led to great Eastern cutlery knives and everything, uh, fit and finish like few other cases. They really take their, they really put a lot of attention into these, uh, um, in, into this line of knives. These are the CV, um, their CV line of knives. Uh, since they do so few of them, uh, they have the yellow Del Rin line. They have this line with that, with that honey jig bone, and they have a couple of other lines. And I think they, they pay special attention to them because they do so many stainless steel knives. It's like, yeah, whatever, but, but they have to, you know, there's special considerations with that steel. And so I think that it shows in the fit and finish of the entire knife. So this also has a secondary pen blade, an excellent pen blade. Also, I keep it very, very, very sharp and rarely use it. That uh, that pen blade has never had a patina, just the uh, just the main. Good walk and talk on the main blade. Uh, the, eh, you know, it's okay. The queen has better walk and talk. The rough riders have better walk and talk, but you know, we'll get to that. All right, second to last carry combination is a classic. It's my road trip combination. There will be others involved, but there will always be this core. Uh, the 
Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is a 2012 from March 2012. And uh, the reason I bring that up is because the blade of the, the Tanto shape has changed, um, changed somewhere along the line. I'm not sure when it did, but I prefer this. I think it's uh, phenomenally gorgeous and unique looking Tanto, Americanized Tanto shape with that swedge and, uh, and the drop to the point. I just love it. I love it. But this is my car knife. You know, I talk about this all the time because it was my first knife with a glass breaker. And also, incidentally, it was the first of my many, many, many S35 VN bladed knives. Um, this is a knife before its time on washers. Um, you know, just as a matter of course, this has always been incredibly smooth. I didn't know why. I mean, when I got this knife, I didn't know that those were washers. I was like, this is, this is uncomfortably smooth. <laughs> and, you know, cause I was slow rolling it out and I was like, it, the blade is always ahead of me. But as soon as I started flicking it, I'm like, Oh, and then bearings became popular in, in all other knives. And I was like, Oh, the SOCOM elite has bearings. So yeah, they were ahead of the game with that. Am I wrong? Let me know. So the carry combination here with the, uh, with the um, SOCOM elite by Microtech, the secondary knife, since we're on a road trip, has to be extremely useful and pretty pretty robust and small. And so it's this, the bug out, the Benchmade bug out. I always have this in my waistband or in uh, if I have like uh, pockets on the thigh, I'll have this in the, you know, in a thigh pocket, um, like on those 511 tactical hideaway tactical pockets and such. Uh, this thing is great. S30V. I still love S30V, even though it's uh, it's not uh, it's not the high the most fashionable steel. Uh, but this one is tricked out with uh, uh, with the um, micarta handle scales. These are um, hmm, Allen Putnam scales. Got them from uh, Blade HQ. They've patinaed very nicely, especially on the peaks of those grooves. Uh, I, I love the bug out, did not love the original handles. Now they're making them with a million different handle styles and materials, which is awesome. Uh, this is one of those knives that deserves that sort of treatment. Um, get yours the way you want it because it is worth it. This is a very thin and light knife, so capable and uh, uh, definitely an excellent axis lock on this one since we were talking about axis locks before. <clears throat> Very sharp blade, very useful blade, and a great contrast to this quite angular um, SOCOM Elite Tanto. Uh, there have been times when, you know, I should have, I recently made my daughter <laughs> cut her waffles with the SOCOM Elite. I did not have this on me at the time, um, but it was a road trip, so hmm, this would have been ideal. <laughs> not only for, you know, backpacking, but for cutting your waffles. All right. The last carry combination uh, is, is a budget carry combination. And I have a, a lot of, and by budget, I don't mean budget. I mean, high value, meaning you're, you're paying less money, getting an outstanding product. Uh, I have a lot of knives that fit into that category. Um, fewer and fewer, I got to say, I, I must admit, um, as I sell off knives to buy other knives, like most of us, I'm buying up, I'm trading up, if you will. And I've had, uh, my, my tastes have gotten rather expensive recently. And I, my desire for carrying anything other than a certain small category of knives has, has diminished. So, so has my high value collection. Um, but, uh, it, it is still pretty robust. And, and one of my new favorites in the budget line, um, comes from is, is, is another gift, just like today's uh, pocket check. It's another gift from this old sword blade reviews, Dave. And that is the Civi. Thank you, Dave. This is the Civivi Keen Natter. And now he, he, uh, Dave, let me know that Natter is an old English term for adder. And an adder, of course, is a poisonous snake. Keen means sharp. So this is like sharp poisonous snake, <laughs> the keen natter. I was wondering like, that's su it's such a bizarre name, you know, and you know, they do come up with some bizarre names. At least they're not numbers. At least this isn't the, uh, the CK five, nine, four, four, you know, it's the keen natter. Wow. Okay. So I got this and it had great action, but I, you know, I've been flipping it kind of obsessively. It's a great fidget knife. 
and it has gotten unreal. It's, it's gotten very, very smooth. Um, great thing about this knife are, is all the different ways you can actuate it. That means open it. Uh, you have the thumb stud, great thumb stud action. Sometimes a thumb stud with a flipper tab gets in the way. You flip the thumb stud, the flipper tab hits your finger. Um, not so in this case, really nicely done. You've got a great flipper that works great. And then you have this fuller on both sides of the blade. You can spidey flick it using the fuller. So just a, a great uh, um, uh, versatile knife. Now the handle, of course, is this nice uh, micarta. It's a, it's a thick weave canvas micarta. I love the way it feels, um, sort of a medium texture. The, the handle itself is oddly thin or short, you know, from top, from spine to, uh, to belly there. It's, it's, a, it's a, a slender knife, but it is, it's, it's somewhat, th it feels like it fills out the hand, but it's not that thick. Let me see. Yeah, it's about 0.5. It's about average uh, in thickness, but that slender handle just seems to work with this design. Maybe it's because I always want my thumb up there on the blade. Something about this grip just feels great. But I will have you know, this is uh, the Civivi, um, typical Civivi, super thin hollow ground uh, portion here. It is so sharp. It is really, really a nice utility knife. And then you've got this flat portion here that's long. You know, this is half of the blade is this forward portion here of the Tanto. And it's flat ground. So this is a really nice compound grind here. You get a lot of flat. You get a lot of hollow. Both edges are very, very sharp. So this would make a, uh, this is a great all arounder to carry, but I, you know, have to say it, it would make a great fighting knife too, because you have great penetrative power with that sort of gradual, uh, but ro ro that gradual, but sort of uh, beefy flat ground tip. And then that really thin slicey sort of recurve portion in the middle. So to, to accompany this uh, on the budget line, which, which has a downward curve and then an upward curve and is the very simple and, uh, uh, but, but modern classic. This is the denim micarta work knife from Rough Rider. This is a $15 knife. As you can see, it's a large sway back, uh, fits basically in the footprint of the GEC number 47 Viper. Uh, that was a knife that when I first learned about GEC in um, maybe 2012 or 2013, something like that, that was the knife that everyone was clamoring for, the number 47. They came out with it again in 2020 or 2019, I mean, and it was the same scene and I couldn't get one and it bummed me out. And then Mike Latham, who I was discussing earlier, had a, uh, uh, a second, you know, there was a little small, tiny crack in the, in the uh, bone handle right there. So he sent it to me and I have compared those two knives and they compare it very favorably. Some things about this that I like even more, perhaps. I do like that this has a swedge. Um, why? I don't know. I, theoretically, it feels like it's a, uh, a very useful thing to have, especially if you're going to use this as a work knife and you're going to be pushing it into hard plastics and stuff. Just the less drag, the better. I also just like the way it looks. You know, I like the way it looks. The, um, the G GEC does not have one, but you know, it's, it's, it's no slouch. Believe me. Uh, here we have that really attractive blue and black, uh, micarta polished all the, uh, transitions. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it. I mean, this definitely is not a GEC. Uh, but when you look at the spine, there's no gapping. All the hafting feels, feels, it feels good, man. This is one of those knives that Rough Rider pays a lot of attention to as well because it's a big seller. Every time they release the uh, micarta work knife or the or this Warncliffe work knife, they uh, they go like gangbusters. And now they are featuring that design in the uh, Rough Rider is featuring that design in the Rough Rider deserve, uh, Reserve line. And you've probably seen the videos at this point, but it looks a lot like this, but with a nice, beautiful. A uh, tan canvas micarta, and then an easy open notch, uh, just milled out of the handle, so you can just pinch the thing open and pull it open. So there you have it. There are my seven great EDC pairings. These are ones I've been carrying recently, or or that have been 
around forever. It's the the TRM Adam with the Finch Runtley. Uh, these are all a picture in contrast, of course. Uh, you have the um, the MK Ultra with the Kira Dashi. You have the Chris Reeve Sabenza Twenty One with the uh, with the little Queen Warncliffe. The XM24 with the GEC14, the Spartan Harzy folder with, uh, uh, with the Swayback Jack from Case, the Microtech SOCOM Elite with, uh, with the old bug out here, and then the budget or, or the high value version is the Civivi King Natter with the Micarta Work Knife Warncliffe from Rough Rider. All right. I realize that's a lot of names and a lot of models, but uh, let me know what yours is. What are your favorite uh, EDC pairings? I mean, you know, what's 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 top of the bill here? Uh, I know it shifts with me and it depends on what I'm wearing and it depends on my mood. Uh, leave a comment down below or call the listener line 724-466-4487 and let us know. We want to know. Your wife, she doesn't want to know. Your friends at work, they don't care. We do. So let us know. All right, so that does it for this edition of the Midweek Supplemental for the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to join us Thursday night, tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern for our, our favorite time of the week, Thursday Night Knives, where we just hang out and you get to join in on the conversation. Uh, just go to thenifejunkie.com slash join, aim your camera at you, and put on headphones. And we're going to have a conversation, and it's going to be all about knives, and I will care. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast Music.